Ever feel like your camera is missing a few megapixels? Aww. Tired of low resolution copies of your favorite images? <laughs> then look no further. Upscale your images to huge sizes with perfect sharpness with Adobe Super Resolution. Available today for this special offer of $60 a month for the rest of eternity. Don't wait. Call us to take advantage of this special offer today. Super Resolution may or may not be any good. You will be locked into a contract of $100 a month for the rest of your life and charge $10,000 if you try to back out of the contract early. No refunds. See your doctor if your telephoto lens is extended for four or more hours. I have a confession to make. I've been living under a rock when it comes to Adobe Super Resolution, and although the feature came out back in early 2021, I didn't pay attention to it at the time because it's very rare for me to need a super high resolution version of one of my images. 99% of the images I take will only ever be looked at on screens, and only once in my life did I have someone purchase a print big enough that I needed a super high resolution version. However, I did see the clickbait headlines and thought the technology sounded game changing. But does Adobe Super Resolution live up to the hype? Let's find out. So if you're like I was and are out of the loop, Adobe Super Resolution is an algorithm-based machine learning model that can create higher resolution versions of your images. The higher resolution versions it creates have twice the width and twice the height of the original image. Now upscaling images is nothing new. Adobe themselves have had an upscaling tool in Photoshop for many years. But the difference between Adobe Super Resolution and previous versions is that the older models didn't utilize machine learning. Machine learning in this case means that Adobe's algorithm was taught what objects are supposed to look like by analyzing millions of sample images that they were given. It then learns this information and at least on paper knows what a higher resolution version of a dog, house, mountain, or whatever your photographing should look like. My first reaction upon seeing the headlines and looking over the sample images was that this technology was a total game changer and I would never need to worry about my camera having enough megapixels again. But when I was researching for this video, I found out that there doesn't seem to be as strong of a consensus on whether the technology is any good or not as the headlines led me to believe. Some people have loved it and have basically repeated Adobe's marketing. Some people have said it's not good at all, and some people have claimed that it's really just kind of eh, which is annoying because I hate having to think for myself and develop my own opinions. So I did the only thing there was to do, fire up Photoshop and Lightroom to test it out for myself. I've used a wide range of cameras over the years, ranging from smartphones to crappy point shoots to the whole gamut of Canon DSLR cameras, from the T1i to the 5D Mark IV to the R6 and more. So that gave me a pretty wide selection of images from various cameras to test out. I took my images and clicked the enhance button, and I have to admit the results did impress me. Comparing the higher res versions to the originals shows a huge improvement in sharpness and detail. But there is one noticeable downside. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this very well because of YouTube's video compression, but Super Resolution does seem to add in a small amount of color noise and weird artifacts that look similar to the ones you would get if you over sharpened an image. You have to pixel peep to see them, but they're definitely there. Still, the end result is impressive to me, and the results look good enough that I'd probably be willing to use it for a large print. Now I might not be all that comfortable if the print was going to be blown up to billboard size or something massive, but if I was going to do that kind of work, I'd want to be using a medium format camera anyways. Now it's great that Super Resolution works well, but how does it stack up to its competition? To check, I first compared it to the other upscaling tool in Photoshop, Preserve Details 2.0. I had never used Preserve Details either, and I was also impressed by it. The end results it produces aren't as sharp as Super Resolution, but then you also don't have as much added noise and artifacts in the final image. Another nice thing about Preserve Details is that you can scale the image to whatever size you want, so it's got that advantage over Super Resolution as well. Gigapixel AI is another popular option used for upscaling images. The big downside of this one is that it costs $99, and I wasn't willing to spend that much for the sake of a video that'll get 100 views if I'm lucky. So instead, I just tried out the free trial, and the results were somewhat mixed. There were definitely instances where I thought that Gigapixel did a much better job than Super Resolution, but there were also instances where it seemed like Super Resolution did certain things better. For example, look at this section of this image I tested. The Gigapixel version on the right has less noise overall, but the noise in the super resolution version is much more uniform and natural looking. Check out these spots on the mountains compared to the super resolution version. The weird artifacts are very random and they stand out more to me because of that. But even then there are certain areas where the image looks better to me in the gigapixel version. Specifically the sky. 
so it really seems like it's a toss-up as to which is better. In the end, it looks like each upscaling program has its own set of upsides and downsides, but all of them work pretty good. Before we close, it's worth mentioning that there is a strong possibility that Adobe will continue to support and improve Super Resolution's capabilities as time goes on. In fact, it would be a huge mistake for them not to. Technology like this is going to play an important role in media creation moving forward, and Adobe's launch will get eaten by another company if they don't stay on top of the ball. So hopefully they keep improving the technology so that they eliminate all of the noise and artifacts, or at least most of it, and allow us to upres our images to whatever size we want instead of locking us into one preset option. It's also worth bringing up that the tool is pretty computationally taxing, with it sometimes taking minutes for images to process on lower end computer hardware. It'd be nice to see the program be made more efficient so that photographers don't have to sit around waiting for an image to process like video editors to do while a video is rendering. For the time being though, we'll just have to be happy with what we have and wait and see how Adobe supports it in the future. Unfortunately, Super Resolution isn't the earth-shattering technology that I initially thought it was, but it is a pretty good incremental improvement on the already existing image upscaling technology that's out there. Using machine learning means that hypothetically, Adobe could continue to improve their algorithms so that it gets better over time, and maybe someday it'll get to a point where we don't need to worry about having a super high resolution camera. But for now, this is still a great technology to take advantage of if you're a casual or an amateur photographer who needs a higher resolution version of one of your images. I'd recommend that you play around with Preserve Details 2.0 and Gigapixel AI as well to see which version works best on any given image, since each program processes files differently and has its own set of strengths and weaknesses. For me though, I'll largely be sticking to Super Resolution for now since it's included with Lightroom, is sharper than Preserve Details, and Gigapixel wasn't always the clear-cut winner when comparing the two. So rest easy, fellow photographers. We've still got a while before our AI overlords know how to take better images than we do. Thanks for sticking through to the end of my video. Have you tried out using Super Resolution on your images yet? And if so, what did you think of the results? Let me know in the comments section below. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, get subscribed to my channel and turn on notifications to stay up to date with all my latest videos. Check me out on Instagram, my username is at BeFunPhoto and I will catch you in the next one.